When I was growing up, the Iran-Iraq war featured regularly in the headlines, and it felt to me at the time that the conflict had just always been going on. As a twilight struggle event, it can have some impact on the late war board situation. We'll take a look at it today here on Legendary Tactics. The Iran-Iraq war event is very similar to other war events like the Korean War or the Indo-Pakistani War. The main difference between it and the others is the timing. With its arrival in the late war, many times it comes too late to be of consequence, but it still merits a close look and we'll do that now. Let's look at the event. Iran-Iraq War is a starred, neutral, two-op late war event card. A player who triggers the event picks a target of invasion. Iran or Iraq invades the other. Roll one die and subtract one for every opponent controlled country adjacent to the target of invasion. The player wins on a modified die roll of four, five, or six. That player adds two to the military ops track regardless of the die result. If a player is victorious by getting a favorable die roll, that player gains two victory points and replaces their opponent's influence in the target country with their own. Please note that you can still trigger the event if you control both countries. This would be done to get either or both of the military ops and the victory points. This event's effectiveness depends on the board situation, which at this stage of the game is somewhat predictable. The Middle East in the late war tends to be dominated by one superpower, typically the USSR. That's because of all the card events that pop up from the mid-war onward that favor the Soviet position in the Middle East. If that's the case, the need for this event will be limited. You could use it for the mill ops, but only if there isn't a decent coup target anywhere, which is unlikely. You can get the same amount of mill ops either way. If you control both Iran and Iraq, as the USSR typically does at this point, it would be best to use the ops value for a coup somewhere else, even in a non-battleground country where it'll have more of an impact. You can also use it to try for the two victory points if you control both Iran and Iraq. It's a 50% chance provided your opponent doesn't control any neighboring states, but that chance might be worth taking in order to ward off war games or to approach or stave off auto victory. Every victory point counts at this stage. This card can also be a source of victory points for the Soviets if the flower power event is in effect, so the US player will need to factor that into the calculus as well. Of course, if the fate of the Middle East still hangs in the balance, this can be a valuable event, especially if your opponent doesn't control any neighbors of your target country. Please note that Afghanistan and Pakistan count as neighbors to Iran here, even though they're in a different scoring region. All things being equal, Iraq will likely be a more attractive target as it is a higher stability and therefore harder to coup. It also may have less of its neighbors controlled by your opponent compared to Iran. For instance, it's very likely that Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan are controlled by the late war, but it would be unusual to see Gulf states and sometimes even Jordan controlled by either player. So in summary, this event can potentially be useful if the Middle East remains up for grabs or if you are desperate for victory points. Otherwise, it's likely you can accomplish just as much with the operations points. This has been our analysis of the Iran-Iraq war card in the game Twilight Struggle. We hope you got some value out of this video, and if you did, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.